Well, welcome and thank you for uh, choosing Racers 360 for your one lap uh, review here at Sonoma Raceway in your Bureau Art Road Tax Package. So I want to start this off by talking about how we're going to, in general, go a little bit faster and, and more than that, be more consistent. I like that you, you accomplished your goal in this session. Um, and after watching a few of these laps, you can kind of tell that we're starting to have trouble. And as you said in, in your notes, having trouble kind of repeating that lap, that it's hard to hang on. So I want to work on a few things that's really going to help you make that lap consistent. You can kind of run in that, that five range, six range consistently. And then as you get consistent with that, you'll then start to be able to find another tenth or two and kind of build from there. So a couple of the general notes that we'll go through are, is our braking. And you kind of even mentioned a little bit about loading the front of the cart as you turn into the corner. And that all starts with how we brake. So we're going to work on braking a little bit harder initially in some of these slower corners in the hairpins, loading the front more. And then with our brake release, managing that load as we transfer that weight and load off the front as we turn into the corner to release that speed and carry speed into the corner with the grip that we need and the, and the mile an hour and the speed that we need. We're also going to work on getting our eyes further ahead. One of the big reasons why we're having trouble being consistent and the cart feels like it's sliding a little bit is because we're missing some apexes. So because we're missing these apexes, we're a little bit outside the grip, a little bit outside the rubber, and we don't have that speed that we can carry into the corner because we're not using the grip of the track properly. Um, and then that goes into the last, the, the third part of this is that line consistency and hitting our marks. And that all stems from where you break, how you break, and getting those eyes further forward. Uh, so let's start this lap and we'll begin to, to uh, give you some notes here. So as you enter turn one here, I'm sure you see that lap time that popped in and, and you're feeling good about that. You hit your goal. And now we need to refocus our mind into turn one. So we'll get into turn one here and we come to the brakes. Now our braking in turn one isn't that bad. We're, we're pretty solid there, but I want to look at, I'm going to turn the volume down here, but I want you to look at your line. So as we come down into here, we have a, a good amount of input in and it looks like we're going to hit our mark, but as you can see here, right about here, we're missing that apex by, a good foot and a half, two feet. And because of that, we're outside the grip. Our outside tires are a little bit further to the right than we want to be, so we're not underneath that grip. I like to think of that rubber line of a berm where you really want to get just inside of it and the tires will reach that, grip into that rubber. Even if it's a green track, if there's a little bit of rubber there, which I know Sonoma can get that way, you're gonna be able to use that grip a little bit better. You can even see you got a little bit of back steering at that at this point. So that you're having to wait to get back on throttle. We're at the apex, we should be able to pick up the throttle at this point. And we're having just to delay a little bit. You do a good job of correcting that and not letting the cart slide too much, but it does hurt our run just a little bit. Good use of the track there, you get your hand straight. Now we're heading into turn two. This is where I'm gonna turn the volume back on. And I want you to pay attention to the sound of your brakes here. So you can hear that. It's very soft. You don't hear any, any noise from the tires or wheel locking. Obviously, we want to keep wheel locking to the minimum, but we should hear in a hard brake zone like this a little bit of noise from the tires. That just means the tires are working. They're, they're trying to grab the track. Um, because of that, we haven't loaded the front enough. Because we haven't loaded the front enough and we braked kind of soft, the cart lays flat, we have less grip, and we're probably carrying a little bit too much speed into the corner. It's hard to see exactly how much that is without the data. But as you can see here, I'm going to turn the volume back down. We're going to go into the corner here. We got a little bit of back steer, and that's mainly because we have a little bit too much speed. And we're not really going to get down to the apex. Again, we did a good job of correcting it, not making it too big of a slide. But again, we're about a foot and a half, two feet off the apex. And because of that, again, we're not inside the grip. We're not where we wanna be. And that's gonna hurt our speed. Also in turn two here, our minimum speed is a little, even on your best lap, is a little bit too far into the corner. In general, you want your minimum speed for the corner 
to be just before the apex so that you're releasing that brake, letting the speed level out around the apex so that you can accelerate out of the corner. In this, this corner here specifically, you can actually hear that mile an hour and that RPM drop and almost decelerate a little bit past the apex. So I'm gonna re rewind just a little bit here. Okay, turn the volume back on so you can hear your RPMs. Really pay attention to that engine note as you come through the corner here. You can see you're picking up the throttle just after the apex, a little bit late because you had to wait and that RPM just kind of dropped all the way through the corner. Where we want that to be a little bit sooner in the corner and that will help us drive off the corner with a little bit more speed. As we enter turn three here, Let's listen to our braking again. We're braking a little bit early and a little bit soft. Again, we're not loading the front enough. Now, good apex there, right next to that curb. You're not on the curb, you're just touching the inside of it. That's perfect. But if you heard your braking there, we didn't hear any tire noise at all, and we were off the gas in the brake for a very long period of time. Now, where you get on the throttle here is pretty spot on, but we have a lot of time coasting before that. So I want you to work on trying to attack that corner a little bit more, break a little bit harder, break a little bit later, see if you can roll a little bit more speed in, and then manage that speed by your brake release, okay? So if you find that you're carrying a little bit too much speed in, maybe you're releasing the brake a little bit too quickly, and you need to release that brake, excuse me, a little bit slower. So we'll turn the volume down here, and we'll get going up to the S's. Good exit here. This is where we had a little bit of inconsistency. At this point in the corner, I need us to start looking a little bit further ahead. Our eyes should be essentially looking right here towards this apex, okay? And as we get a little bit closer, we're gonna find ourselves needing to bring, keep bringing those eyes up. So at this point, you're probably still looking at where, just so you don't hit this curb here, the first curb right here, you're probably staring at that a little bit too much. I want you to bring your eyes further up the road to this curb, the second curb, and make a straight line. Imagine that you're drawing a straight line all the way through this section and trying to minimize that steering input as much as possible. So we'll play the video here, and I want you to pay attention to how much you're turning through this section, especially the, the right-hander. You see, turn a little bit more there, and then we'll enter turn five here. So turn five, we need to use the rubber a little bit better here. Consistently, we're missing this apex, and uh, because of that, we're not able to get the cart rotated. So let's look here again. We're gonna come in. We use the curb on the entry, which I like, Good bit of steering input on the entry, maybe a little bit more than we need. That could be caused by a little bit too much entry speed. But you've already straightened your hands here and look where that cart is pointed. The cart is pointed already kind of off the track a little bit before you've had the cart fully rotated around the corner. And you get a good drive off, but if we rewind just a little bit, we can see again, the closest we get is maybe a foot and a half, two feet to that apex. So that gap there that we're looking at, again, if you see your outside tires, you're right on where that darkest patch of rubber is. That actually is where the least amount of grip is inside that patch of rubber. So obviously on the outside of, outside of that is the least amount of grip on the circuit, but in that actual patch of rubber you can see, and I'll draw kind of what that looks like here you can kind of see it kind of comes from, from here and to here, okay? So we want our inside tires, I'm gonna to switch to green here so you can see it a little bit better. We want our inside, our outside tires, I should say, right about here, okay? That's where the most amount of grip is and that's gonna have that cart hitting your apex. So kind of imagine yourself using about half of the cart more to the right and that'll put you in a little bit better position if you can get that cart a little bit halfway in between there, right in between that green and red line on the inside, that will give you a little bit more grip. 
So we'll clear those out here. We'll get going on this lap again. So we'll enter here. We'll come into turn six and seven. Good line, good use of the road, but you can see we get a big amount of steering input. Back steering, cart starts to slide. That really costs us some speed in the center of the corner. So let's rewind. Let's see why that's caused. We're gonna turn on the volume and see where we're picking up the throttle here. So if you see there, we rewind a little bit more. Get back to where you're picking up the throttle. Pick up the throttle right about here, right as that cart starts to slide. And if you notice, you still have to bring the cart back to the left, right? We have that second, that turn seven, that second apex that we have to hit, but our hands are straight ahead. And we've started to pick up that throttle before the cart has actually rotated for turn seven. What I'd like to see you do is be a little bit more patient on the throttle. You can pick up a little bit of throttle just to keep your speed leveling out, but we really can't accelerate because these engines have so much torque in mid-range. If your speed increases a little bit too much in the middle of this corner and you're still turning, finally, as that speed increases, the grip, if the grip isn't there from the chassis or the, or the track, it's gonna give way. So we need to be a little bit more progressive and slower with our throttle input. And how that could look here, if we were to kind of look at your, your data trace, I know in carding we don't really have uh, many throttle sensors, so I won't go too crazy into detail here. But right now, your throttle is kind of ramping up pretty quickly and then leveling out to full throttle. I wanna see that throttle input be a little bit slower You'll skip the full throttle a little bit later, and that will just manage that grip. If you had more grip, you could be a little bit more aggressive with the throttle, but because we're struggling with grip, whether or not it's tire wear, whether or not it's the track conditions, whether or not it's the chassis setup, we need to be able to adapt to that. And sometimes you just have to be a little bit slower to throttle to keep that grip underneath you, because that big slide actually costs you more lap time than being that little bit later to throttle to keep the grip underneath you. So we'll clear this out and we'll get going through the corner. Again, you do a great job of fixing that mistake and making it as small as possible. So now we're coming into turn eight here, last corner. This is one of your best corners on the track, one of the corners you're the most consistent with. You use the track pretty well, but the one thing I have noticed is we're a little inconsistent with the amount of the circuit that we use. So you see you hit your apex very well, but on your best lap, you used a little bit of that curb. You probably used half of the curb. On here, we didn't even get to the curb, which tells me, again, we're not looking for far enough ahead. I want you, we'll go back a little bit further, a little too far ahead of here. We'll go a little bit back. I want you to start looking for that track out point before you even get to your apex. So at this point in the corner, we need to be looking for our track out point, okay? So at this point, we should be looking up the road where that green arrow is pointing, trying to find where you want to track out at the final corner. Now, obviously you want to know if you hit your apex. And this is where we can open up our field of vision. You're going to use your peripheral vision. You're going to, for a split second, bring your eyes back down to this apex here, just to know, but it's only for a millisecond. Then you need to bring those eyes back up to the exit so that you know whether or not you're going to hit this apex or not. So let's finish off this lap, clear these out real quick. Great apex again, tracking out, coming to the line, and we can see two tenths slower on the dash, two tenths slower than the lap before, which was your best lap. So not too bad, but we would like to see that consistency in a, in a, in a sub 50 second lap to be within a tenth every single lap. So that's really that main goal. Before you go any faster, I wanna see you work on that consistency. And again, a little bit harder initially on the brake in our slower corners to load the front more. Loading the front is not carrying more speed, okay? The cart does not, 
just by carrying more speed does not actually load the front and bring that inside tire up. You have to put load to the front and that in a go-kart in any car really is weight. So how do we get more weight there? It's by braking a little bit harder, putting that weight there a little bit quicker and forcing those front tires to really grip to the track. And then you will manage that speed with the brake release. And that all depends again on how much grip you have, how much grip from the chassis, how much grip from the circuit, and that will adapt every day, every session. It could change just that little bit. So great job and uh, looking forward to working with you again.